Welcome back to the greatest mixtape ever. We actually are going from side A and we are flipping over the cassette going to side B. So we looked at side A the last couple of weeks. I'm here with DJ Lopez and we looked at the Old Testament and we looked at how, you know, God had this perfect plan, but then sin entered the world and it was this fall. But then yet there was this promise and even these prophecies of what was yet to come. And that leads us into side B. Um, when we see Jesus coming into the picture, we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves yet. Uh, but that's really like, um, like a cassette. And we looked at some different cassettes in the first section. And so Lopez, what happens back in the day, like yeah, when you take that cassette? Sit. Right. Story and about. what do you do? Yeah. Because remember, you gotta flip it over. Yeah. And so it's amazing talking to you, Pastor T, because we're talking about, you know, there's a pause. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the story's ending. It just means that for that juncture, we have to flip it over to now yeah. get to side B. So you were kind of sharing with me about what took place as far as how long that pause was and what was going on. Yeah, there was actually a 400-year wow. pause between the Old Testament okay. and the New Testament. So that, 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 that was like a long, like, flip it over, right? Yeah, that was a um, long... But yet God was doing something during that time. He was setting things up, getting ready for the Messiah, for Jesus. And that story was unfolding. And so we've been saying that God is like this executive producer yes. of the greatest mixtape ever. He's like the DJ putting it all together. So DJ Lopez, what was your favorite mixtape that you ever did that you got to watch that story unfold and you got to like put the pieces together? Yeah, it was funny because you just, you, you, Pastor T just dug it up going back, way back. So <laughs> man, just so pumped up. And I think that it just reminded me so much about uh, New York and Philly and the train. You remember Philly, the L, you yep. know what I'm saying? And so, that had a subway theme. Exactly. It was the crossover Everything. cipher volume five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what made it so special is that within each transition, there was a, a stop. There was a pause where you could yeah. actually hear individuals get on and get off. Yeah. Kind of like... You, you got these like samples yeah. of the subway yeah. train stopping, like, mm -hmm. you know. So it's amazing because think if you look at the, the New Testament, which we're not yeah. side B, just the fact that you have... Think about the, the 12 disciples, mm -hmm. the ones that got off. Issue with Judas, the brother yeah. who got off. Then Paul enters in. You know, yeah. and what he's done, and you start to talk about acts, and they're loading yeah. in and loading out, you know, so... And you so. watch the, the subway line now, then extend mm. from outside of the Jewish world into the Gentile exactly. world, going from Jerusalem to all these That's other parts, point. Samaria, and even beyond, and Paul does these missionary yeah. journeys, uh, Ephesus, um, Colossians, Corinthians, and we see all these new churches and lives being changed. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Very good. I like that. And it's almost like, and when we talk about the power of a mixtape, you look at that that intro again, that starting point, and, and it's almost like in the New Testament, there wasn't a starting point. It was now a... a the train was already rolling. It was already, exactly. Yeah. But, we, but, but then that's the big divide that the world has. For some reason, they look at the New Testament as if there is a divide. Yeah. There is, and that's what Jesus comes in. Yeah, there's not, because many times, as we're going to see in the, in the New Testament, side B, there's many references back to side A. Jesus himself oh. in the Gospels many times even quotes stuff. Um, from scripture that's in the Old Testament because that's the foundation. Exactly. That's that music bed that we've been talking about, the Torah, first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're about to jump in to side B of the mi greatest mixtape ever. I'm glad you guys are here today. You ready? Let's ready. go. Yeah, crossover. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Well, welcome to the greatest mixtape ever. We are in part three, and I was able to dig up one of these for y'all. Anybody know what this is? An ancient artifact called a Walkman. So how many of you guys ever had a tape before that your Walkman or your, you know, your boom box ate your tape, ate your favorite tape? Like you were listening to it, and suddenly you heard like, and you're like, oh no, oh no. And you popped it open, you pulled it out, you know, and the reel was hanging, you were like, oh no. You know, you, you, had to, you had to get ready to do surgery on it. <laughs> Carefully, slowly, slowly, oh, oh wait, wait, oh, rewind a little bit. You know, and if you didn't have one of these handy, you would just use your finger. You're gonna be like, hold, hold up, hold up. I got, got my pinky in there. 
Ladies, if you had your nails, you'd be like, oh no, like, what do I do? Can't get this right? So, anybody ever had a tape before, their favorite tape that might have actually ripped? Like the actual tape ripped? And so then I would actually get some, I would get some clear tape. And I would get a scissors. And, and I would cut a little tiny piece and put it on there, put it just right, and then, you know, reel it together. I became an expert, like, cassette tape surgeon. I, man, I practiced. I was, I was good at it. People would be like, oh, my tape broke. I got you. I, I'll put it together for you. I got, you know, I, I get my tools out, right? I, I set it up. And so then, you know, when you put it in, in, in your cassette player, in your Walkman, you would hear that one little spot where the tape was. You'd be like, whoop, whoop, whoop. But it worked. It worked. It, it was still together, right? So I remember I had to do that with my beloved Run DMC Tougher Than Leather tape. I, I was a Run DMC fan back in the day. And so usually I didn't play it much around my parents because there was a few words on the album. Not that many, but a, just a few. Not like a lot of today's hip hop. But I was at the beach one time and I was with my friends and we were showing out and I had the Run DMC tape in there. And my mom was close by and it got to this certain spot on a song and it was like, boop. And my friends were like, looked over at me and we were like, my mom was like, she heard it. She came over and took that radio. Give me that radio. Give me that radio. Give me, give me that tape. She took that tape out of there. She was like, threw it down the street and embarrassed me in front of everybody, man. I was like, man, my heart was like, oh. Uh. You, you ever lost your, your tape when somebody just like threw it, broke it, whatever? It was beyond repair maybe even. And, and how about when, when you take a tape, right? And, and it would be like at the end of side A and it's playing and it's playing and then it gets like to the last song, but then it just keeps going. Keeps playing because there was space. Remember that noise with the space? Just have the hiss. But some of y'all, you know all your tapes had that hiss in it because you had like a copy of a copy of a copy. Every time you made a copy, the hiss in the background got worse. It wasn't digital. This was old school, like analog, right? And then eventually when we get to the end of the tape, then suddenly it would like pop. You're like, oh, it's, it's at the end of it, right? Unless you had, this was Roberto's Walkman. This was like a bougie Walkman. It had the auto reverse. Woo! You were balling if you had the auto reverse. That was like high tech. It would automatically do it for you. But a lot of times it would pop and then you knew like that was the time when you had to go ahead and take it and flip it over to side B. Well, today we're going to flip the cassette tape over to side B. And so I'm glad you guys are here in our series. This is part three, the greatest mixtape ever. And so we've been looking at the Bible with the concept of it being the greatest mixtape ever. I mean, if you think about it, Dream with me for a second. We're a little creative here. I'm an artist. So, so the Bible, you got 66 tracks, a.k.a. books, right? You got 40 artists, a.k.a. authors, and then you got the executive producer, the creator of the universe, God, who crafts all this together and blends it together to be this beautiful masterpiece. And he blends together all these different genres of history and poetry and prophecy and puts it together on this incredible masterpiece called the Bible. Somebody give it up for the Bible today. Make some noise for the Bible. So, listen, the Bible, uh, uh, let's be real. The Bible can be complex, right? There's probably times when you've read the Bible and you didn't understand maybe a certain part of it. There's, uh, there's, a, there's the context to it you maybe didn't catch. Or, you know, maybe you even wondered as you're reading a certain section, like, I don't even understand why that's in there. So our goal with this series is not that you're going to understand all the Bible. Hopefully you will get more familiar and there'll be some new things you learn. Absolutely. But our goal really is so that you can almost have like a GPS, a map, as you go through the Bible. So if you open up and you're in 2 Samuel or you're in Nehemiah or you're in Job or you're in Psalms or you're in Ezekiel or you get over to side B and you're in the Gospel of Luke or you're in Romans or you're in Ephesians, that wherever you're at in the Bible reading it, when you open it up or you press play, that you'll know where it's at in the story. Because the Bible has a big picture story, a grand narrative that everything flows from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And so we want to help you guys to see what that big picture is, and that's what we've been doing, unpacking it the last couple of weeks, and we're going to do a little review in just a second, so that you can know, okay, 
I, I, know where, I know where it's at in the story. I know what's happening in the Bible. So uh, are y'all ready? Y'all ready to press, press play on side B? Stand up with me. Let's pray really quick before we dive in. God, we love you today. We thank you for your word, the Bible, the greatest mixtape ever. How you beautifully blended it together. You brought all these different people, God, from different cultures and demographics and times and different continents even. You brought them together to write this. You inspired them. Looked at the scripture that talks about all scripture is God inspired. So ultimately, you're the author of the Bible. You directed it. You guided each author. You put it together beautifully. It's a love letter. It's a story. And so, God, I pray that today we'll get even more familiar with the flow of the story, that we'll be able to connect some of the dots and we'll be able to see this big unfolding picture of your plan, of your love for us. God, it's no accident that we're all here today. I know there's some people that maybe need to be reminded of some things today. There's some people that maybe need to hear some things for the first time. Wherever they're at in their spiritual journey, God, I pray that today you'll, uh, you'll use this word, you'll use the scripture we're going to look at as we dive into the New Testament, side B, the new covenant, that it will speak to us today, God. And so do your work right now. Use me, speak through me. Pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. amen. So look at somebody and say, are you ready for side B? All right. So listen, in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was 400 years that passed. So it was kind of like that blank space at the end of the cassette tape, and it was, just, it was just running, and nothing seemed to be happening. But how many of y'all know that God is always working behind the scenes? Even when it seems like he's not listening or he's not there, he's there. And he's working things together for his purposes, for his plans. So before we go ahead and we, we press play on side B, I want to ask you guys, pull out your notes, your mixtape notes. You should have got them inside of your program when you came. If you're worshiping online at home with us or you're somewhere, um, you can download the Crossover app. You can take notes that way. It's not formed in a cool mixtape. Um, like our physical notes are, uh, but you can uh, jump in there and grab that. And so um, we're going to rewind for a second. So everybody say rewind. <laughs> All right. So remember, side A is the promise. Side B is the fulfillment of the promise. And so, so far in week one and week two, we, we discussed five different tracks We've been kind of setting up this series with tracks because, you know, it's musical, it's a mixtape, right? And so we're going to rewind really quick and look at those first five tracks. If you were here or if you weren't here, every track had the word kingdom in it. Somebody say kingdom. kingdom. So kingdom in this context, it means everything being under God's rule, under his authority. It's, it's his plan. So here's track number one, guys. Track number one, write this down, was the pattern of kingdom. The pattern of kingdom. And this was, this was a happy track, if y'all remember. It was happy, man, because Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. You know, I'm just laughing because my sister over there, her shoulders started going like this. <laughs> she, she was, I just, man, I had to. So it was a happy track. I mean, they were in communion with God. They were in the garden eating. It was paradise. Every day they were talking to God. It was great. But then track number two kicks in. It's the perished kingdom. And the track definitely shifts, and it has a darker tone to it. And so we looked at, um, man, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed in the garden. They only had one thing that they were told to do. You just can't eat from this tree. It was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did they do? They ate from that tree. They blatantly disobeyed God. And so what happened? Now they knew, and not only knew good and evil, and it wasn't just about that. It was who decides what good and what evil is. And that's what mankind has been wrestling with ever since then. We want to be the boss. We want to be the one in charge. It doesn't matter what God said, like, I'm going to make up my own rules, right? And so that's the stuff that we've been wrestling with. So track number two, this relationship with God and, and creation was now broken. But then we get to track number three, the perished kingdom. And it shifts. And there's a better vibe. It's a little brighter. And, and so, you know, there was this promise of reconciliation. God still had grace and mercy on mankind. Aren't you, aren't you glad God still loves us? Look, look at me today. God loves you. 
You, you might have even been contemplating on coming to church today and saying, man, I can't go to church. I messed up this week. Or I haven't been to church in a long time. Or, you know, some of you think when you step in church or you step in God's presence, you know, if you've messed up that God's just going to, he's going to like stomp on you. He's going to zap you with some lightning. Listen, God is happy you're here today. He's happy. There's no better place to be but in his presence, y'all, in his house. So know that God loves us, right? And so we, we kind of talked about these covenants that God made with people. We broke that down in week one. You can go back and watch it on our YouTube channel. And then last week we got into tracks number four and number five. And Pastor Christopher put the needle on the record. And chapter four, track number four was the partial kingdom. So we looked throughout the Old Testament. In side A, we could see that God's promises um, of kingdom, it was partially fulfilled through the, the history of, of Israel. And there was some good stuff that happened in the midst of some of the bad stuff and them disobeying God, but partial kingdom was there. But there was more to come, and that was track number five. Track number five was the prophesied kingdom. Old Tis the Old Testament is full of prophecy jams. It is. You have Moses. He shared some prophecy. You, you look in the book of Psalms, there's prophecy. You look towards the latter part of the New of the of the, um, the Old Testament. And there's a whole bunch of books that are even full of prophecy, minor prophets, major prophets. And, and here's what prophecy is simply, guys, in a nutshell. It's a prediction of the future. And so there was all these predictions of what was gonna happen, what the future was gonna look like. So, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip the mixtape over to side B and we're gonna press play on track number six. But before we do, one more thing I wanna remind you of to write down is this. Um, this is what the greatest mixtape is, the thing that holds it all together. It is the unfolding story of God's plan to save the world through Jesus. So just like, just like that tape holds the whole mixtape together, right? Um, that story of Jesus, it, it holds the Bible together. It's that thread that goes all through the scripture. It's leading up to Jesus, the Bible is the unfolding story of God's plan to save the world through Jesus. So now we get to track number six. Y'all ready? Yeah. Here's track number six, what we're going to look at today, the present kingdom. The present kingdom. So if you've ever looked at the beginning of the New Testament, which we're referring to as side B, it has a genealogy in it. It's the genealogy of Jesus. Genealogy, what's a genealogy? Genealogy is a family tree. How many of y'all have ever done your family tree before? kind of traced it, looked at your grandparents, great-grandparents, uh, maybe the country you came from, if you can even trace back that far. And some of you are second, third generation immigrants, and you can look at that. Both of my grandparents came from another country, and so kind, kind of look at that. And so as you trace back your family tree, that's what's happening at the beginning of Matthew. Now, you could say, uh, well, you know, it's, it's kind of a lot, it's wordy. It's a lot of words, like, why, why do I need to know this? But if you look at it through the lenses of what we just looked at, inside A of the mixtape, where there was a lot of prophecy, there was a lot of prediction of what was gonna happen, then even in that genealogy, there's some exciting stuff, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Because remember, there was this covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, and he said, you're gonna, you're gonna have many sons. And many sons had, <laughs> right, just check it. So, but, but wait a minute, when God gave him that promise, he was 75, his wife was 65, they didn't have none of their own kids, and they were already older. They're like, man, it's over, it's a wrap. But no, here's God making this promise, saying, no, you're gonna have many descendants, nations are gonna come out of you. And then we see in the beginning of the book of Matthew that his family tree goes all the way back to Abraham. Wow. Then we see in 2 Samuel chapter seven, it talks about um, this promise that um, the, the Messiah was even gonna come from the line of King David. And, and we see David in his family tree and we just kind of go down that line and there's all this amazing stuff that's in there that is prophecy and then look at mark the gospel of mark so we're inside b we're in the new testament now gospel of mark chapter one verses two and three it refers back to some of the predictions and prophecies actually from the book of isaiah verse two it says it is written in isaiah the prophet i will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. So who is that prophecy talking about? Well, we look in the next verse, and it says, and so John came. 
Who was John? Which John? John the Baptist. John the Baptist came with, with his crazy long hair and his beard. He was eating locusts. He was a little weird. But man, he was like, he was preparing the way for Jesus. And people were following and people were getting baptized and all this amazing stuff was happening. The message was clear that the waiting was over. The fulfillment of the promise from side A, the Old Testament, was now soon to come. And then we see Jesus proclaiming. Just a few verses down, go down to verse 14, it says, uh, John was put in prison. And then after that, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. Verse 15 says, um, Jesus said, the time has come. The kingdom of God is what? It's near. Repent and believe the good news. So here we have Jesus now saying, like, the time has come. It's here. And Jesus was saying, I'm going to fulfill everything that the Old Testament was talking about and was leading up to this point. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 16 and 17, he told his disciples this. He told his squad. He said, but blessed are your eyes because they what? They see. And your ears because they what? They hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men, they long to see what you see, but they did not see it. And, and they long to hear what you hear, but they did not hear it. So you know what Jesus is saying here? He's saying, guys, the kingdom is now present. You're seeing the predictions come true. You get to see and hear this mixtape come to life when other people, they just got to hear the snippets. They just got to hear the previews. How many of y'all ever heard a snippet of an upcoming song or an upcoming album from one of your favorite artists and you got excited about it? You're like, oh, man, that sounds good. I can't wait for that album to come out. Can't wait for that record to come out. Yeah, and, and maybe if you're like a super fan, that's what they call them nowadays, right? If you're a super fan, maybe you were even counting it down. Maybe you had it, you know, up on your calendar. Or if it's nowadays, you got an alert in your phone, like when it's going to be available. And you were looking at it like, man, I can't wait for that to come out. And so, you know, the artists nowadays with social media and stuff, they'll tease you with all kinds of little snippets of the music video, of this, of that. Maybe they'll do a little interview, talk about the concept of it. And so, you know, there's this anticipation leading up to, right? Now, if you're old school and you remember before we had downloading, by the way, man, they just came out with that article. I saw you post it, Pastor Chris. iTunes is going to go away. Can't believe it. Like, they're going to replace it with something else. It's dying anyways because um, nobody's hardly downloading anymore. Everybody's streaming. It's just all going to streaming. But before we had downloading or streaming, right, you actually had to go to the physical store to get the album and buy it. Physically, you had to get in your car or on the bus or on your bike, and you had to go. Anybody remember the record store? Every mall had a record store. Remember Sam Goody? Record City? Like, you know, some of those stores like that, they had the local little mom and pop record shops and stuff, right? And so the day that that album was going to come out, if it was a big release, sometimes the record store would stay open until midnight. Or maybe they would close and reopen again at midnight. And if you were a super fan, there was like a line at the door waiting to get that album, man. You were, you were ready to get that cassette tape or that CD or, you know, or whatever. So let, let me ask, was there anybody here that ever waited in line to get an album before? Like any, any suit? Woo, okay. All right, we got a couple people here. Yeah, young people don't even know about that, man. We're so spoiled. We're like, yeah, it came out. Yeah, whatever. I'll listen to it later, right? So like in essence, you think about it for a second to tie it in with what we're looking at. People just heard snippets and previews and predictions and prophecies about this Messiah that was coming, and they were waiting hundreds and hundreds of years. And now it's here. Like the music dropped. Like Jesus is here. He's present. He's available. You can have a relationship with him. You can have connection with him. Like they didn't get to have that before. It said many, many prophets and even righteous men didn't have that. But what you get to see and what you get to hear, they didn't get to have before. But we have that. So I know that there's some of you that are here today, maybe you came and you're struggling. Maybe you came here today and you're confused. Maybe you came here today and honestly, you're depressed. Maybe you came here today and you're in the middle of a crisis and you need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. You need some hope. I'm here to tell you guys today, hope is here. Jesus is here. 
He's available. He's as close as the mention of his name. If you believe that, give Jesus a shout today. Come on. He's here, y'all. Like the kingdom is present. It's here now. So, so here's this thing. We have this promise of the Old Testament, right? Side A, and it's fulfilled. But who is it fulfilled through? Write this down. It's fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment in the New Testament, side B. And so the first week of the series, we looked at the different covenants that God made with his people. We looked at the one with Noah and Abraham and Moses. And the last one that we talked about was called the New Covenant. The New Covenant. So now that we're on side B of the mixtape and we're on track number six and the kingdom is present, right? We now begin to hear as we press play that Jesus introduces the new covenant. He's the one. Somebody say Jesus. Come on, say that name. Here's the thing, y'all. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law that was introduced on side A in the Old Testament. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. How did he fulfill it? Because he perfectly obeyed it. The Bible says that Jesus was perfect and he never sinned. And so in the Old Testament, people would have to go to the temple. They would have to come to church service and bring a sacrifice to be forgiven of their sin. So they would bring an animal or they would bring like a fruit offering or different things, right? But, but no, now here's Jesus, the son of God, who was perfect and sinless. He offered himself as that perfect sacrifice when he died on the cross. When he died on the cross at that moment, like that fulfilled, that fulfilled God's wrath that was against us. He took the penalty that we deserve so that we can receive blessings through this new covenant that we have just faith in him. So to break it down, like he lived the perfect life for us, then he dies our death for us. Wow. Romans 8, 4 articulates it like this, says this, as a result, as a result, all the requirements of the law are fully met in us if we have a relationship with Jesus. Like, like he, he covers us. So this incredible swap takes place, right? If we have trusted in Christ and he's our leader and we're following him, um, we can be sure that our sin is taken away and, and we're given this perfect righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 breaks it down like this. It says this. It says, God has made him, Jesus, somebody say Jesus again, Jesus. who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So the death of Jesus uh, introduces the new covenant. Isn't that an incredible swap? Yeah. Did you ever swap something with somebody before? You know, if it's kind of, if you consider it kind of like an equal value, like, you know, if you're tired of something and you're like, oh, yeah, you can, you know, did you ever, did you ever maybe swap like a tape or a CD with somebody else? And you were like, I, 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 I'll give you yours if you give me mine, if you, if you just let me hold it for a little bit, right? But there were some tapes or CDs you didn't want to let nobody hold, right? You're like, nah, you, you, can't, you can't take that one. That's my jam. That's my favorite. So back in the day, if somebody would have came to me and said, yo, yo, Tommy, I, I'll trade you this MC Hammer tape for that public enemy tape. I'd have been like, uh-uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to give you my PE tape. Chuck D speaking some truth, you know, we got some hard beats on there. Hammer, kind of commercial. He can dance, though. You know, I don't know what that dance was like, the hammer pants, you know, right? He can dance, though, but, you know, so there were certain things like, nah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let that, that one go. And then if somebody would give you something that is of greater value and you knew it was, then you'd be like, okay, so what's, what's the catch? Like, is, is it broken? Is it messed up? Did you, did you tape it together in five different places? You know, is it bootleg? You know, did you steal it? Is it hot? What's the catch? Right? Because we all know the old saying, right? If it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true, right? How many of y'all have experienced that before, right? So this swap, if we think about it, y'all, it looks too good to be true. Here, here is the Son of God that's trading his perfect sinless life for our broken sinful life, why would he do that? Why would he, why would he, why would he trade that? Why would he give his life for us when we were broken and dirty and messed up? Man, somebody say, but God. But God, that's his love. That's his kindness. That's his grace. That's his mercy. Guys, that is the new covenant. Let's give God some praise for that new covenant, for Jesus, for his love. And it's grace. There's no catch. 
It's beautiful. We don't deserve it. It's awesome. So, so here's four things that we get from the new covenant. Four things I want to leave you with today. The first thing is this. We, we get redemption. Somebody say redemption. Redemption. So we've been set free by a price. Well, what was the price? 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 breaks it down. It says this. For you know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold. So we weren't bought with silver or gold. We weren't bought with a stack of cash, with a bunch of Benjamins or anything like that. No, what were we bought with? It said, uh, not with silver or gold that you were redeemed from your empty way of life that was handed down to you by your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And so catch this. Why does it say a lamb without blemish or defect? You know, Jesus is also referred to many times as the lamb of God. Because remember I said in the Old Testament side A, people would have to maybe bring a lamb to the temple to get forgiven of their sins. You'd have to bring a lamb to church to be forgiven of your sins. And that lamb also like couldn't be a messed up lamb because some people tried to pull that. They'd be down at, you know, at the marketplace. They'd be like, oh, the, yeah, that skinny lamb right there with the broke leg. How much is that one? Oh, that one's on sale? Oh, yeah, let me get that one. I'll take that one to the church. People would do that. They would bring, they would bring God a bootleg lamb. So I'd be like, here's my sacrifice. God, God be like, oh, no, that's not a sacrifice. You got that for 99 cents down at the market. Nobody wants that lamb. Bless that lamb, you know, right? But here in the scripture, it's saying like Jesus is the perfect lamb without spot or blemish, without any defect, right? So that's how we're redeemed. Somebody say redeemed. So we get redemption. The second one is we get reconciliation. It says we were God's enemies, but you know what? We're now his friends. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17 says all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, not counting men's sin against them, and he has committed us to this message of reconciliation. So did you catch that? Two things in there. First of all, we're reconciled back to God because of Jesus, through Jesus. And then second of all, when we get reconciled back to him, now we have this message of reconciliation. You know what that means, family? We're called to be agents of reconciliation. Now, first and foremost, in context, that means we're supposed to reconcile people back to their creator, back to God. But listen, watch this. If people truly do that, and they get to know God, and they mature in their relationship with him, then guess what? They, they have this message of reconciliation. They want to see other people get reconciled to him, and they reconcile with other people as well. Like, all kinds of reconciliation happens like between people groups and races and skin colors and economic brackets and look around this room and give God some praise for what we see in this room. Because listen, y'all, we're in a culture that's full of division, disrespect, discrimination right now at, at a, at, in an era where we've seen that more than ever before. But churches like ours, where we're diverse and we're a family that's together and we might have differences uh, in our backgrounds, in, our, in the way we grew up, and our experiences, and all those things, but the common thread that we have that pulls this mixtape of Crossover Church together is Jesus. That's what we have in common. Our, our, our Savior, our Messiah, y'all. That new covenant that brings us all together. So from that new covenant, again, we get redemption, we get reconciliation. Here's the third one, justification. What does that mean? Maybe that's a word you haven't heard much before. We don't always use that too much in culture, but so before we were under God's condemnation because we had sin, right? But now we're righteous in his sight. Romans 3.23, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of God's uh, glory or his standard. Um, we, we just, we can't live up to it, right? But we're justified. How are we justified? What's that next word? How much did it cost? Nothing. It was free. Freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. So we're justified. We're, we're, we look right because we look righteous because of what Jesus did, if you have a relationship with him. And the last one, number four, is conquest. Conquest. How many, uh, how many guys like superhero movies? Anybody? Okay, so, so what, what's your favorite superhero movie? What, what is it? What is it? Okay, y'all too quiet. Y'all kind of quiet. Listen, in a couple of weeks, we're starting a new series called Summer Fun at the Movies. We're going to have a lot of fun this summer. We're going to look at some different movies and uh, tie that in with spiritual truths and scripture and stuff. We've got some great stuff planned for you. Side note. So 
But here's the thing. Before we had a relationship with Jesus, guess what? We had no superhero powers. We were powerless um, to evil forces and temptation. But now if you have a relationship with Jesus, his spirit, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Guess what? You got some power. Somebody say power. power. The Bible talks about you got some dunamis power to be able to overcome temptation, overcome situations, whatever is in front of you, God's with you. We sang a little bit before, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing's, how many of y'all believe that? Nothing's impossible. Colossians 2.15, it says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. That's the enemy triumphing over them by the cross. So Jesus won, conquered on the cross. And so, I mean, now we have this, this, beautiful, this beautiful sound, this mixtape. The new covenant is here. So speaking of sound, let me ask this really quick. How many of you guys ever played an instrument before? Anyone ever played an instrument? Okay. So on the count of three, tell me what, what you played. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Bernie the gazoo doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> Listen, when, when I was, um, I got my drums right there. Um, when I was um, a kid, my mom really wanted me to play an instrument. I came from a musical family. My mom played piano. She played organ. She played in church. Uh, my uncle was a singer. My dad tried to sing. Couldn't sing like my uncle. Anyways, uh, but she wanted me to play something. So when I was eight years old, I started taking trumpet lessons. Anybody play trumpet in here? Anybody? Okay, a couple trumpet players. All right. So I started playing trumpet through elementary school. By the time I got to middle school, I joined the band. I was in the middle school band. I was like third chair. Then eventually I moved up to second chair. They have these things called chairs. That, you know, that's how good you are. Then eventually I was first chair by the time I was in eighth grade. And I was actually even in the all-city middle school band, and I was first chair with a couple other guys. Man, I was on top of the world. Like, I, I was getting good at the trumpet, right? And so, you know, but in, in a band, if you've ever seen a band play before, like a full, like, band, not like a rock band or something, but a band, you got all these different sections of instruments. You got your horns, you got your woodwinds, you got your string, you, you know, you got your percussion section. And, and separately, you know, they can play different sections, and it's cool, but when you hear all of them come together, it's amazing, right? But you need these two elements. So first of all, you need, you need the song, or AKA it's called the score. Everybody is playing the same song, but then to make sure they're playing it on time, you need the conductor. You need the band director, right? And you, you ever like see a, a crazy a crazy band director that's up there, and they're like up there, and you know, sometimes they're more entertaining than the actual thing, because they're like, you know, like, you know, and then they're like, you know, like, my band director was like that. I mean, we just loved watching him, because he would get, so he'd start sweating and everything, he'd start grooving at certain parts, and you know, like, we were just feeding off of his energy, right? And the crowd can even feed off of the energy of whoever the band director is, the conductor that's up there. So, but, but here's the thing. Um, God has a song for you to play and for me to play, and he's the conductor. But so many humans, we just ignore God, and we play our own notes. We play our own song, right? And so all around the world, it's not, not hard to reason then why there's not a lot of harmony, because you have everybody that's trying to just play their own thing all over the place. They're playing their own tune. It's, it's kind of like if we just step behind the turntables and we kick God out. Just get out of here, God. And we just, you know, we just try to take it ourselves. And we really don't know what we're doing. And we're back here. We're trying to press the buttons and, you know, you know, you know our hearts beat, hearts beating fast. We're crazy. And then sometimes, you know, we, we don't know, do we slow it down too much? We speed it back up and we're trying to act like it's good and it's not. Like throw your hands in the air. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reality is we get to this point, we realize we're a mess. Our lives are a mess. And then we just have to say, God, God, come on, come on. Get, get back in here, God. Take over. Take over. Give it up for our DJ, DJ Too Smooth. Doing it for the Lord. Put him up, put him up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. He's getting excited. So listen, we're, we're called to be part of God's band, his symphony. He has beautiful music for us to play. And so we, we get to be part of the band because when Jesus was here on this earth, he played the music perfectly. 
He submitted perfectly to God. And then he ended up giving his life on the cross for you and I that messed up and were trying to uh, play music in our own rhythm, our own tempo. We were all out of sync. But now because of what Jesus did on the cross, guess what? We get an opportunity now to get back in the band again. And because Jesus resurrected three days later, guess what? He's the eternal conductor. He's the one that's, that's telling you, you know, when to play the notes. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide you and direct you. And, you know, I, I think that uh, <laughs> God might be, you know, moving up there and doing some cool stuff. And, but here's the thing. We get invited back into this story. God's the star. He's got the leading role. But we get to be a part of it. We get to be a part of it. And we get to produce beautiful music with our lives. Because each of you have a mission you have some music, you have some notes to play in this big mixtape story. And guess what? When you begin to do that uh, and you're playing from the right song, the right score, and the executive producer, the eternal conductor, Jesus, is leading and guiding you, guess what? It sounds beautiful, guys. You bring glory to God. How many of you guys want to bring glory to God? How many of you want to make him smile? You want to make him proud of you, right? You know how that happens? That happens when we, take, when we take our hands off of the controls of our life. And many of us, if we're honest, we struggle with that. But if we can learn to take our hands off of those controls and say, God, you're the conductor, you're the executive producer, I'm gonna let you take care of everything and, and I'm just gonna follow you. I wanna pray for you today. If you bow your heads around the room, if you're worshiping with us online, and whether you've been at church a bunch of times before or whether you're new to church or today may be your first time or your first time just scrolling across a page and you saw this and you're, you're watching right now, I want to ask you today, who's behind the controls of your song? Who's conducting and directing the music and leading your life? What song are you even playing from? Is it from God's? Or is it just a page, music page, out of the culture or out of the world somewhere? So maybe you've been a Christian for a while, or maybe you're not even sure where you're at yet, but I want to ask you today, um, is God the executive producer, the conductor of your life? Because I believe there's many of you today, you got to admit and be honest that, man, I need to take my hands off the controls because you can come to church and you can act one way and you can even sing some songs and listen to the word, but then you go back to your regular life and you don't blend the two together. God wants to be involved in your whole life, in the details. And then this week when God taps you on the shoulder to do something or not to do something, we just brush them off. Well, I'll be at church Sunday, God. I'll talk to you then. Well, God knows my heart because I'm still doing this. God wants to change your heart. He wants to lead your heart. He wants to use your heart to touch other hearts. So if you're here today and you would be transparent enough to admit and say, I need God to be the executive producer of my life because I've had my hands on the knobs and I gotta let go. I, I need him to lead. I want him to lead. I am committing I'm gonna let him lead. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand. I wanna pray for you just a moment. Lift your hands up. There's lots of hands up around the room. God sees you if you're online at home. Just leave your hand up and that's in a sign of surrender. Let me pray for you today. God, we love you today. And we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your word, the greatest mixtape, the Bible, your love letter to us. And God, today we, we learn that there's this new covenant, this new agreement. We can have new life. We can have forgiveness because of what Jesus did. He's our eternal conductor, our executive producer. But God, many times we, we try to take the wheel back from you. And so God, I pray for my family today, my brothers and sisters that have their hands lifted up, they're admitting, like, man, I need God to take full control. I'm, I'm letting go of full control, God. Here I am, my hands are up, and I'm saying, God, I want you to take over. That's you today. Just for a second, just go ahead and tell God that, right where you're at. Just tell God, I'm giving it over to you. <laughs> Take over. Forgive me. And God, as people begin to do that and things shift in their life, 
even from little things that add up to big things. God, I pray you'll use them and that the music that they begin to produce out of their life will become a sweet sound to you, first and foremost, but to people around them. People will begin to see like, wow, there's something different about her, something different about him, there's something different about them. May people begin to say that about us. May they see you shining through us, God, because you're directing us. And we're part of your symphony. We're part of your band and beautiful music is being produced. So God, use us as Crossover Church to be your light in the city of Tampa and beyond. Use us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise today. Yeah. You guys can stand up with me around the room, and I want to seriously challenge you. Let God use you today. Let him use you this week around our city and beyond. He's using our church, y'all. There was somebody at the first service. There was a couple that was here from New Zealand. They watched us from New Zealand. They were on vacation in Orlando, and they drove over here today to come to church. Yeah. Yeah, so, so be encouraged. Um, last thing I want to say, we're going to read our mission statement in a moment and dismiss, but last thing I want to say is I personally want to invite you guys to come Wednesday night. Maybe you've never come Wednesday night before. We have a thing called Growth Night. We have a Bible study that we normally do. This Wednesday, we're switching it up. We're actually doing a night of prayer. There's going to be a little bit of worship as well, but we're going to be praying for some people. So if you have some needs, um, I'm also going to be just sharing some, some, some family stuff with the church about our church and the future, where we're headed it's all good stuff, um, but we want to pray over some stuff, some big decisions, some things that God uh, may have around the corner for us. And so uh, we're not going to stream this Wednesday night because some of the stuff I'm going to share is um, we want to kind of keep that in-house right now. Uh, plus, some of the prayer stuff we're going to do is going to even be outside of this room. Um, so if you're streaming, like you would be looking at an empty stage. So on Wednesday, 7 o'clock, I want to invite you guys to come. If you have kids, we, we, have the, we do have the kids' wing. Um, the movement is happening in the gym as well. They're starting their big summer surge thing. Uh, the movement is happening right now. Give it up for our youth ministry. They're in the gym right now. So that's why there's less, less, there's probably about 50, 60 teenagers over there right now. There's less people in here. All the teens are in there with some of the leaders. Um, but let's be praying for our teens this summer because summer's here. Pray for our kids this summer. It's going to be a good summer in Jesus' name, right? All right. Well, hey, if you guys are here first, second, and third time, don't forget to get your gift bag in the lobby. I'll be out there hanging out. But we want to send you guys out with our blessing. Um, this is our mission statement we read. We want to see you guys live life in 3D. So let's read it. Count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Our mission is to discover, develop, display Jesus Christ every area of their life. God bless you guys. Have a great week. You, you got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day, you got to begin to recondition your mind. In the darkness of the night, monsters running through my mind. I don't have the strength to fight. I need you. Fear is pounding in my chest. I can barely take a breath. Wishing I could find some rest.